Welcome to our continuing playthrough of Atlantic Chase and the breakout series, Operation Berlin, Part 2. And when we last left off, we had managed to get our, me as the Germans, managed to go all the way around the Denmark Strait and into the North Atlantic, where we are chasing a convoy bound for Halifax, or no, bound for Clyde, Liverpool. And we managed to get them down, and we know where they are. We got we got eyes on them, but we lost the initiative before we could uh, close the deal. So now it is the British initiative, and so we got to see what they're gonna do. So, and they have their own little chart there. Let's get. Whoop. And we checked the weather already. It uh, remained uh, good, and so now we're just rolling on the chart. A six. Hmm. Is a six. Is, if I recall correctly, a convoy completion action. I do believe. C. Yes. Convoy. Convoy. Select a British TF with a convoy. If more than one, select the shortest trajectory. Well, that would be this one. So they're going to make a move to escape. All right. Well. Oh, ah, ew, ew. Giant. Das Boot destroyed the whole fleet. And what it essentially means is they are going to set a trajectory for their destination in Clyde, Liverpool. And let's just edit that in. And there they are. Now, because they had to lay down a trajectory in a space with a station, enemy station, there you get an intel marker attached to their that segment. And because they have an intel marker, they cannot do the completion action. And the bot and the bot rules say when he does that, they are he's automatically going to pass and do time lapse. And the time lapse will get rid of both the contact marker and the intel marker. So that's what he does. And you can only he can only very slow. He can only get rid of one. Uh, well, I'm not sure on that. Well, it doesn't matter in this case. We know it's only going to be the one. So, that's his move. So, he passes from this point, and we are back to us. And, once again, we're going <laughs> to... We're going to try to flag down this uh, convoy and, and bring them to bring them to battle. And uh, that's really what this is. This is cat and mouse time. So, our task force with the battle cruisers, again, plots a trajectory to tag these guys down. And I am going, well, let me do some math -sies. Um If I just went to here, we're talking one, two, three, four, five, six. And if I added a second one, that would be the same column. So, and it's better for us to go a little long and get in there so that we don't end up just giving them, well, what you call them, evasive maneuver markers. And we will bring our coordinating task force for their bonus. This, of course, puts us in air range, unfortunately, but we got to start, we got to start pumping. Start, got to start generating some sinkage. So, there's our trajectory moves. Naturally, our next move is our friend, the Naval Search. Let's get that going. We are in this column right here. And plus two to our, our die roll. Because of the Cadet Coordinating Task Force, we need a good roll here. And <laughs> once again... <laughs> uh, we are rolling uh, the second worst possible result here. <laughs> Snake Eyes being the worst. And the people who say you're the worst roll in the world have been confirmed yet again. So this is a five, and so we got our little hole action here. So let's go to the map. And as usual, we remove that trajectory. And then we're going to go ahead and remove all these. Oh, does he? No, he doesn't have an evasive maneuver for marker. He could have had, if he had one, he could say, no, you're going to remove this one and I'm going to be able to complete. So no. Now. Okay. <sighs> well, 
there we are and now it is time for the time lapse and it would make sense to go in this order one two and one and here and one two and one here now let's The British, will they go for an invasive maneuver markers or will they try to seize the initiative? They will try to seize the initiative. They need a nine. They get no modifiers to this roll. Eight, just missed it. As usual, we, where's that, where are you? Oh, there you are. That goes up for a bonus. And we do get another crack at this. Now. Obviously, we have basically one choice here, and that is to Navy search one more time. Hoping for better die rolls. Let's get that going. The good news is, we are in the lowest column possible. We also have coordinating task force. The bad news is, I'm rolling dice. So, there we go. There we go. That's a little better. That's a little better. We are looking at a 12. Oh, yes. Aha. Uh -huh. We have a limited skirmish here. And contact. Our uh, station and, well, it's already, well, no, it's not an already station. Okay, let's implement this. The result of is this. And we are faster than the very slow convoy. And do we want to initiate a limited one round battle? That's what it allows us. And the answer is yes. Now, so we're going to go to the battle board. But the question before we do that, because let's see here. We have uh, an escort check here. I'll try to get it in the camera. And we basically roll one die and see if anyone is with him. The convoys, that is. Okay. A one. Oh, boy. <laughs> a one means add a slow BB to the TF. Okay. The book specifies either the Nelson or the Rodney, so we'll just kind of randomize this here and focus. The Rodney is going to be added to this convoy. Okay. Well, and we are going to the battle board. And I didn't mention this in the beginning of the thing, but I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and we'll go take a look at the advanced rules, which adds a little more kind of narrative flair to it. Uh, I think the combat is a little more dangerous, but uh, let me get, oh, excuse me, let me get that set up. So first thing that happens in the, under the advanced rules is we make a snafu check. And this is going to basically add a a little wrinkle to the battle and it's kind of funny because you can see there's no no effect there's always something going on so you would think that like maybe 11 or 12 is like no effect just play normal but nope there's gonna be something going on both in bad weather and good okay so roll two dice six unexpected bearing Target player ships, that's the British, uh, set up in any attitude. Okay, target player's choice. Uh, well, this is solo this is solo bot. And, ooh, well, you know what? Yeah, uh, it would be advantageous for the battleship to set up in a acquiring position rather than a close. Uh, uh, the first, okay, we'll explain Attitude. After you've done your snafu check, we bring everyone to the board, and we bring them onto the board in an attitude, certain attitude. There's three attitudes, and one is closing, the other is running, and the other is acquiring. Okay, and in the first round, all ships are normally either, well, if you're the uh, attacking player, you, all your ships are going to be, the active player is going to be closing. The target player can be closing or running. So the convoy 
the British convoy is going to run. The battleship, I think, and if we're playing because you have a better you have better shooting when you're acquiring, I think we're going to set that up in acquiring. So let's go to that. Here's our battle board. This is going to last one round unless something strange happens uh, because this is a skirmish. And so we place our con uh, British convoy in a running position. And that means you place this red arrow towards the edge of the board like it's going to like leave. And like I said, I think it's more advantageous. And by the way, this is uh, because this is a skirmish, everyone is a, is a far range. My ships too. Uh, we're going to put him in uh, acquiring mode because he's going to be able to shoot better from that. Me, I am stuck. Luke Jen on there. Oh, sorry. Can't see it in the camera. We're closing, so our red little red arrow is pointing this way. Or up towards there. Let's get this back down on here so you can actually see what's going on. Okay. So, and in um, when you're playing two-player, not solo, uh, this is secret uh, simultaneous reveal. How would you do that exactly? Yeah, the chart says players secretly select each ship's attitude, reveal, and apply at the same time. But how would you do that with these markers? I mean, it still has the air on here. You can't, like, secretly, I don't know, maybe cover them up something and lift the, lift the lid? Yeah, or write it down. I don't know. Well, anyway. Uh, we're doing solo here, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we've got our attitude. And now it is to the gunnery stage. Uh, sorry about that. Edit had to bring in some groceries. I have three kids in high school and they're still buying Lunchables and chocolate chip egos. So, where were we? We were getting ready to go to the gunnery stage. Now, interesting thing here is there's a lot of glory and drama in attacking this thing. But there aren't victory points. Well, there are. If I can get two hits on it and damage, you know, flip that over like that, it's like... Is it one? I think it's one point. Um, whereas if I get it with just one hit on this convoy, it's three points. So, I mean, it's a, it's a range. Um, but if I can get the, So clearly, i got to keep a level head here and go after the... Uh, right uh, the proper target here so gunnery extreme range all right and um well, let's look at our modifiers here so very slow target correct plus two Uh, so no. In out of smoke, uh, running ships cannot produce. Neither can convoys. Um, if I put both of them, uh, the battleship and the uh, in running mode, I could have made smoke. Eh, uh, I think it's too late now. Gunnery value is um, well, both of them shoot at long range with a two plus two modifier. So one two. So we're gonna be shooting with plus four on these shots. Uh, the bad news is it's extreme range, so we've got to roll three dice and take the lowest two numbers. All right, well, let's get back up here a little bit. And here's our... Yeah, there. Okay. Let's start with... Good, nice, and all. Plus four. Here we go. Oh, nice. Well, seven. Eleven. Eleven is a um, what do you call it? severe result, and when it's a convoy, it's two hits. All right. Nice. And that's just the Gneisenol. Now we still got the Scharnhorst to shoot. Okay. Three dice again, plus four. Am I focused? Focus. Uh, not so good this time. Lowest two is snake eyes. That's six. That's going to be a splash. Yep. Okay. Uh, the convoy does not get to shoot back because they do not have a long range modifier. The Rodney will shoot at a plus 
two, I believe, because uh, these are fast ships he's shooting at. Yes, a plus two. And let's say he shoots at Benicetal. And by the way, these are simul considered simultaneous. Uh, if, if it was a surprise, uh, we'd shoot first and then inflict damage and then so on like that. But, there we go. Okay, he, goose eggs. Boom. Splash, did he splash? Did he? Okay. Now, this advanced uh, battle is probably is not that interesting and doesn't give you the full flavor of the advanced rules uh, because we just, this is just a one-round skirmish. There'd be a torpedo round, a maneuver round, lingering effects round, a breakaway round, and then there would be disengagement when you do that to see if any of those lingering effects that happen. But this is only one round. They're going to want to run away. They want to end this as soon as possible. So we're just going to go ahead and end it. Uh, I think technically if this convoy stopped running, it would might add another round to the battle, but it's not going to do that, especially after that first salvo, which really put some hurt on them. So that is the end of that battle. Well, let's go back to the board. We got to return to the board. This task force will now have a contact marker on it. He already has one on there. The battleship actually stays with the um, convoy until it completes or, you know, gets destroyed or whatever, which probably isn't going to happen. So that is it for them. This means that there is time lapse, which uh, doesn't apply here because we're all stations. Um... Now the British will attempt to vie for initiative with a plus one to their die. Yes, the initiative will change. So, and this is how I tell. Like that. So, British time, and so we need to first check the weather. It remains good. And what will they do? And one. Okay, one was what? Ah, okay, I almost remember. Uh, one is an airstrike, but there is nothing in range. There are no targets. And when that's the case, the weather is good. Perform an airstrike. No target. The weather is good, but there's no target for airstrike. Select a TF with a CV in it. There are none in play, and when that's the case, you're going to roll a die. And it rolled even, and when it's even, select the nearest T uh, task force with a CA in it, nearest to a German TF. Um, we do have those. One of these. And a selected TF performs actions intended to bring to battle the nearest German TF. British TF will not enter a hex in German air support range. Okay. Sounds good to me. All right. This one is closer than this one. Sorry, that wasn't in the camera now, was it? Oh, or much in the camera. So, here we go. Oh. So, one... Two, and the reason I'm going this way is it's nice to have trajectories kind of intersecting with your own guys so that you have opportunities for coordination. Uh, three, four, five. Now here's where an issue comes. Who do we try to bring to battle? And because this is the Manchester, a cruiser, if he goes up against the two battle crew, German battle cruisers, he's going to get hammered pretty hard. Um, but if he goes against, tries to bring this guy, the Shear, they can survive well, one shot, and they can bring put damage on him, because it only takes one hit to do that, and that will knock me hard for victory points. So I think the wiser move is to go after him, even though he has a contact marker, so it's going to be easier to bring him to battle. Ah, oh, man, that's a conundrum that I don't think the... The uh, bot rules do that, so we're just going to make a decision here. I think the um, I think this is the smarter move because um, this has a contact marker. We can still do stuff to him. It's going to force him to do things. Uh, I, I kind of 
I mean, if you disagree, well, this is the way we're going to do it. I mean, what happens, happens. So I think this is the smarter move for the British. Um, uh, potentially give, uh, giving much more potential for uh, hitting us with some uh, penalties. So he does that. And the next thing he will do is try, because they're stations, he's going to try to do an engage action rather than just your run-of-the-mill naval search. So let's get that going. We will be rolling on the five column. That's unfortunate. Uh, we will coordinate with the um, the convoy and battleship for a plus two modifier. I will coordinate with my Scharnhorst Gneisenol task force, Gneisenol task force for a minus one. So we're looking at a grand total of plus one to the British rolling on this table. This one to, f oh, nope, on this one. Ugh. That's actually not that good. Well, I'm going to have to get very lucky on this die roll. Alright, so. Seven, eight. Eight is going to be a miss. Okay. So. Oh, I, I did that wrong. I did that wrong. Um, when he came into here, because those are stations, he should have gotten... An intel marker, intel marker, intel marker, <laughs> and because of that, that would have allowed us an interrupt uh, roll. Let's go ahead and see if that would have affected anything. A five on the intel is just a minus one to the the engaged uh, roll. No difference, no difference. But it's good to remember that. I caught myself making an error there. Okay, so nothing changed. Um, so the British has to do time lapse, and the question would be, would he invoke the intel limit, or the, and try to remove that, or would he just do a regular? He's a fast ship; he would remove four segments. And my thinking is, because he's the hunter rather than the hunted, he would just go ahead and remove four. So that's what I'm going to do. Like so. And because it was an engage action, we don't. I don't seize the initiative. I vie for the initiative, which is a die on die roll with no modifiers. Higher guy wins, and we get it. We initiative shifts back to us. First thing that will happen is a weather check. The weather remains good, and. I think this is a good place to stop. I uh, got to see a little battle action there. Things are heating up here. Uh, we got to score some hits, so we're, so we're making some victory points. And haven't lost any just yet. So, so far, things are going all right. Uh, things are, um, of course, the longer this goes on, the more trouble I get into. And uh, we'll see how that goes. So tune in next time, and thanks for watching.